Hello, my name is Jim Hodges. I'm Research Director at Heavy Reading Cloud Security. And today I'm joined by Razvan Totter, who is the Vice President of B2B to C, B2B to C at Bitdefender. So welcome, Razvan. I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Thank you. And um, uh, I'm really I'm really glad to be here and thank you for inviting me. Okay. So, you know, as as I cover security and cloud at Heavy Reading, I've been doing that for the last four years or so. And one of the things I always struggle with every year is every year there's a different type of mix of cyber threats that, that threaten the network. And uh, and this year, I think it's been really no, di no different. There's some unique things kind of happening up there from cybersecurity perspective. So I guess my first question for you is, you know, you're, you focus on this on a daily basis. Do you think that telco subscribers are really facing greater cyber threats than they have in previous years? Well, the short answer is yes, but let me let me expand on that. Um, I think we're already uh, all of us tired of hearing about COVID already, but um, it has actually accelerated a trend that we've we've seen happening, which is the rate uh, with which we are adopting devices in our lives, smart devices, and also the rate which we are adopting uh, online services in our lives. And COVID has only accelerated that because we started using services like, you know, Zoom, GoToMeeting and all that to communicate. Um, delivery services have exploded. Streaming subscriptions have exploded. And so basically a lot of our information and a lot of our lives has moved to online. And this has only um, expanded what we call the attack surface. The attack surface is the total places that uh, a hacker can use to exploit and try to gain access to our, our information. So um, the attack surface has, has grown and the number of, of attacks has, has, has exploded. And we can see this in, uh, in the financial loss, for example, the, the money that was, that was lost last year, for example, in, in cyber fraud is close to $7 billion. You can imagine this type of this type of uh, amount has been uh, heavily uh, present has been present in media all the time has been covered all the time. So now um, subscribers and consumers in general have become really aware of the fact that they are exposed and that they need to protect themselves. And if if you look at any kind of uh, study. Uh, which um, talks about the, the top five or top 10 concerns that people have these days, uh, being the victim of some sort of cyber attack is always in top five. It's, it's quite shocking for us, but that people are, are really afraid and they are, are now aware that they need to protect their digital life. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, I, I totally agree with you about sort of the digital life and the applications in the cloud, but the point you make is a, a powerful one too about just the number of devices. We're rolling out more devices all the time. Price points are coming down, new types of services. So yeah, so that's an excellent point. It's not just about the, the cloud applications, it's also about the devices too. So I, I guess my, my other question for me was, you know, so what do you think, if you had to sort of focus on maybe one area, what do you think the, the biggest cyber threat that subscribers are facing that telcos should really focus on right now? That's that's a hard question because it's, it's very difficult to pick uh, an attack or a threat. It would have been much easier in the early days where we had like a computer virus that you would catch on your laptop or your, your desktop even. Uh, and that would be it. But but today we have complex malware, we have mobile malware, we have fraud, we have scams, we have uh, phishing, we have smishing actually, which is SMS phishing, mm -hmm. and you know identity theft and and all that. So um, the types of attacks uh, are are numerous, and the new types of attacks appear every day. And it's not even the the number of of the of types of attacks, but it's actually the number of attacks themselves, the sheer volume of attacks that happen every day. Because um, cyber crime is a lucrative business, and um, it's actually being treated like a lucrative business. You'd be shocked that you can enter uh, the dark web. And for a reasonable amount of money, you can purchase your own uh, DDoS attack or fraud campaign or scam campaign or whatever. You don't even need deep technical knowledge. They, they actually have support lines 
So it's it's basically run like a corporation. So the number of attacks have exploded over the years. It's 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 quite incredible. But if I were to pick one or one, let's say, vulnerability that we all have and that we it's it's under our control, so we can do something about it, is actually passwords. Uh, I know it's it sounds very simple and it's an old concept, but uh, we're all we the vast majority of us keep using weak passwords. And not only that, but I think the bigger vulnerability is that we're using the same passwords for all our services because remembering passwords is a difficult thing. So I can bet that if I can guess your password, I will not have access to only one of your services, but to multiple services. And this is what the hackers are also exploiting. So I think what we can do here is we should be really using a password manager app. They're they're um, they're modern. They work on all platforms, and they really help us not only to use um, difficult to guess passwords like longer passwords, complicated passwords, but to to use different passwords for each one of our services. So that's and and if we do this, that will make a tremendous difference in how safe we are when we are online. Yeah, great point. I mean, one of the things I've I've sort of been focusing on and try to get a handle on is it's it's exactly as you said, you know, the threats are diverse, kind of the where the application you're running is is changing as well. So the, the threat landscape, as you said, is really is really broad. And it's a positive thing for services, but from a cybersecurity perspective, like you said, it opens up the sort of the, the landscape to, to bad actors. But so that's one of the things that I try to understand from a from a telco perspective, if they're going to be offering cybersecurity services for their subscribers, they've got to kind of make some decisions and investments on do they focus on sort of endpoint security, whether it's devices or cloud security and applications or a mix of, of that. So do you think there's kind of a, an optimal approach for how, how service providers and hotelcos can really offer these services? Like what do they support? Is it endpoint security or, or cloud security or sort of a hybrid approach? I think uh, the answer is a bit more complex than that because um, as a telco, and, and basically we do the same as, as uh, cybersecurity providers, we need to be careful and we need to be, um, to be paying attention to uh, not only how the cyber threats evolve, but also how the cyber needs or how, how consumers perce perceive security because that evolves in time as well. I mean, if if you're if you're looking like ten years ago, uh, people were were worried about um, I don't know catching a virus and losing their files, and that was it. And then um, they were they were worried about okay, how can I protect more devices because now I have a laptop and a mobile phone and, and things like this. And then this has actually evolved to today when we're not so much worried about losing our files, or even though we want to protect that. But we're also worried about what if somebody steals our identity? What if somebody actually sees my photos? What if I, I'm sending my information or my documents over the internet and somebody else gets access to it? So it's all about privacy and you know, um, data security and identity, online identity security and all that. So, and from a, from a consumer point of view, they are now aware that they need to protect all this. So they need to protect their devices. They need to protect their privacy. They also need to protect their children. So they need parental controls. They also need to, I don't know, have a VPN and things like this. So it, selecting a solution to, to protect all that becomes a daunting task. And it's, it's, a, it's daunting because usually it's not even one solution. It's like three or four solutions that you need yeah. to piece together in order to achieve this level of, of security. And this is where telcos are very well positioned because they, they can offer a holistic approach to all this. They can offer a, a service that has multiple facets and say, okay, now I will protect all the devices that are inside your home, but I'm also able to protect you while you're on the go. But we're also offering you VPN and we're also offering you parental controls and, on, and all that. So I think the best approach for, for a telco is a diversified portfolio in cybersecurity that has multiple routes to upsell and cross-sell and kind of always serve the needs that their users are perceiving. Yeah, that's interesting. You made a good point about cross-selling. I think, you know, if 
if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, what's in it for telcos as, as applications move to the cloud, I would have thought maybe they'd have fewer opportunities, but they actually, have, I think, have more opportunities uh, because of, as you said, they've got this opportunity to cross-sell and to offer VPNs and password managers. So there's a lot of fundamentals they can they can they can really develop and provide to their customers. And because, as you said, the subscribers are aware of this now; they're aware of their privacy requirements and data, and we all store a lot of personal data. So it's, it's interesting. So I think there's kind of ironically more in it for telcos as applications move to the cloud or become just you know, move to the edge as well. Would, would you agree with that? It's definitely more to to do here. It's actually much better. Um, and it's because, uh, as I said, the number of devices and the number of services that uh, a regular consumer, a regular subscriber is using has exploded, which means they have much more diversified needs in, when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, and yeah, it, it, I mean, let's be real. For the telcos, um, offering cybersecurity is great for NPS. I mean, you you would be uh, servicing a need, you would be fulfilling a need that your subscribers feel, and you will be alleviating their worries. But also, I mean, cybersecurity has, has always been a high value added service. And not only of high value, but with low churn, high adoption, and high retention. Because once you get these, these worries, uh, you know, um, alleviated, once you, you fulfill their needs, they they are quick to perceive the value, and they they will they will keep this service for a long time. Yeah. So so I think it's it's a very lucrative business for a telco to to step into this. Okay, interesting point. And to maybe focus a little more on that about investment, you said that it's a you know, it's a strong business opportunity opportunity for them. Um, and I think going forward, it's going to be even probably even a greater um, opportunity for them. So do you think that that really telcos really understand kind of their, their requirements or their needs or their the importance of strategies to invest in cybersecurity on kind of a long-term basis? I think they 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 understand it. And I think cybersecurity is a good long-term investment to to be offered as a as a service by as a service by by telcos, because let's face it, um, this trend is not going away. We will right. keep adding devices, we will keep adding services, we will do more and more online, uh, to the point where we will actually create almost like a digital twin of ourselves that lives in the digital environment. So this will keep and will only expand on on our needs as consumers to be protected when we are uh, online, to be to protect our digital identities, to protect our digital lives, and so on. So I think telcos should partner with, with uh, a cybersecurity provider, but they should also um, be careful to partner with, with uh, a provider that keeps evolving, that is, that is um, committed to evolve in the future and to always be relevant in the future as a portfolio. And um, I think it's important to look at a portfolio to always um, like pass two types of tests, to pass the test of how easy it is for a consumer to enable it and to use it, and also to pass the test of time, like how relevant would it be a year, two years, three years in, advance, in, in the future? Because Cybersecurity keeps evolving, and what we what we've learned is that uh, in order to have a, a, a successful cybersecurity product in the consumer market, it doesn't only need to um, you know respond to the cybersecurity needs like the real needs, but it also needs to adapt uh, to how we perceive the, our need of cybersecurity, what we perceive that we need to be protected. Yeah, interesting. So really interesting discussion. As you said, it's really an interesting time. There's a, there's a lot of factors, a lot of things in the mix. And obviously, 2023, we'll probably see more evolution and, and more things that we'll have to, uh, to uh, yeah, I guess, ad administer or address from a cybersecurity perspective. So yeah, interesting discussion. So looking forward to uh, what comes next. So 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 Razman, thank you for your time today. And uh, we, should, we should get together and do this in uh, a year from now and see what's happened. Yeah, that would be a great idea. And uh, thank you for your time and questions.